In this part of the talk, we're going to be showing and telling the story of the, why, the rise of West Africa as a civilization and as a force of power, a force of intelligence, a force of economic development, a force of infrastructure, many different ways which have influenced the world which we live in today. Now, as we've seen with the Moors, whilst Europe was tearing itself to pieces after the fall of the Roman Empire, many areas of Africa were booming. In medieval West Africa, we see the rise of the richest man who has ever lived, the development of universities with international appeal, with Timbuktu educating more students at a time than the entire population of London at that time. We also see evidence of African trade with America previous to Columbus with, and also Africa trading with India and China. Now, this boom didn't go without drawing attention. As the word of Africa's wealth spreads, foreign forces mobilised to rob Africa of its wealth, as we will see. In medieval Africa, let's take a look. Murdoch created this map to show the overlap between ethnic groups and geographical borders. We will later see how the borders of African nations have been created over hundreds to thousands of years by the rise and the fall of African civilizations and the scramble for Africa, where new borders were created with very little sensitivity to the culture of the people living either side of the borders. But for the moment, let's first appreciate how diverse Africa is. Africa has 54 countries and 1.2 billion people. However, the continent is richly diverse. There are estimated to be 10,000 different cultures and languages with distinctive religious practices in Africa. This means that a large variety of people have had to live amongst each other despite having distinctive differences. This has led to the development of huge civilizations and unity throughout history but unfortunately, conflict as well. But it is important to remember how different cultures may categorise their co-inhabitants. In Britain, for example, we have inherited the rudiments of a class system and a racial system. This means that we tend to categorise people dependent on their financial status and their race. We have inherited this from our feudal and imperial past. However, the Ottoman Empire and many of its descendants categorised people based on religion. Africans today and historically may categorise their co-inhabitants based on their tribe or their religion. We as human beings are pattern spotters. We have evolved to want to categorise things, objects and people. Now, this isn't a bad thing unless there are negative and harmful practices associated with this, as we shall see later. Now, my task to you, divide and conquer has been a common strategy to weaken a population. Divided we fall, but together we stand is a common saying. Imagine your community, such as your school or your football team and your group of friends. How do you think someone would divide your community? Which strategies would they use? Think of a time maybe before where your friendship group or your school group has been divided for whichever reasons. Was someone spreading rumours? Was someone spreading lies? Was there a new leader of the group? Then I want you to explore how you yourself would prevent yourselves as a group from being divided. Which strategy, which counter strategies would you use to prevent that division?